Okay, so about a month ago, I made a record holder out of recycled skateboards. And the point of that video was to show you how I like to process these recycled skateboards and turn them into a usable lumber. Now, at the end of the video, I made a comment, something along the lines of, so in a way I could probably make this with just a jigsaw. Should I do a video on that? and many of you wanted to see that video. So in this video, I'm going to be making a record holder out of recycled skateboards, but I'm only going to be using a jigsaw as a power tool and everything else will be regular hand tools like you know a knife, a little dowel, I got a ruler that I have to use, a pencil, things like that. So for every tool that I use, I'm going to leave it on the table and at the end of the video, we'll find out how many tools I actually use. So yeah. Let's get started. Before we begin, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is AG1. AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. It's a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients that aid your brain, gut, and immune system. And now that I'm a dad, I really want to be more healthy and I want to be around my daughter as long as possible. And I want to be full of energy and be present around my daughter instead of being mentally and physically tired all the time. And I'm not the the healthiest eater so trying to be on a strict diet and taking multivitamins and taking pills it's just not the easiest way to do it for the past month or so I've been drinking AG1 every single morning before I do anything and I can confidently say that I am more energized and I'm way more focused on things that I really have to do I also been feeling less stressed and my mood's been kind of uplifting and positive lately and trust me most of the times I'm just real angry. Now, maybe you're on the go or maybe you're traveling or maybe you just forgot to take it in the morning. There's travel packs available so you could always be on the go. So if you've been wanting to improve your health and have a healthy daily routine, check out AG1. And right now, if you click the link in the description below, you'll get a free one year vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs with your first purchase. So if you've been wanting to improve your health, make sure to check out AG1 and click the link in the description below. Thanks AG1 for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to making something with one power tool. Woo! Okay, so I already ran into an issue because I seem to have picked the worst day to do this because it's really cloudy outside and I don't have a source of heat for de-gripping these skateboards. Now, like I told you many times in this channel, you could use a heat gun or just leave it out in a sunny day for about like 30 minutes and you should be able to take off these skateboards pretty easily. Now, since I don't have that much time, I actually use my brand new D-Gripper 5000, which is my last video, and pretty much took it off in like 10 minutes. Now, let's say you just use the sun to de-grip these skateboards. You're probably gonna have to use a dowel and a little nice sharp utility knife. So those are the two tools that I use so far. What we're going to do next is since we can't use the miter saw to chop off the nose and the tail and the hardware pieces, I'm going to start marking it with a ruler and uh, start cutting it out with the jigsaw. Okay. Okay, so we have our skateboard here and in order to mark where I have to cut for the nose and tail and the hardware pieces, like I mentioned in the last video, what I like to do is mark four inches away from the inside holes and that would be the nose and tail and the hardware pieces. So I'm just gonna roughly mark this just like that and then same thing for the inside holes. Cool. So I used a square or a ruler so far and a pencil. And then I marked it for the same. And now I got to do it for all the rest of the boards. So let's do that. Okay, so 
I marked all the skateboards and I'm ready to cut it with the jigsaw. Now, when it comes to using the jigsaw, the most important thing is having the right kind of blade. Now, personally, I'm using this ultra fine bimetal jigsaw blade, bi-directional tooth design by Diablo. And I really like it. Get a really nice clean finish, but we'll see how it goes because we're cutting, we're doing cross cuts. So it should be a little rough. When it comes to actually using the jigsaw, just go as slow as possible. Let the jigsaw blades do the work, not your arms, I guess. So the best way for you to stay on the line is just go nice and easy and slow. All right, let's try this out. Safety goggles. Okay, so instead of using the miter saw, I uh, used a jigsaw to get this middle prime meat section, which is what I need. And I, got, I was able to get a nice nose and tails and the hardware pieces pretty damn straight, if I do say so myself. So I'm going to save those. And now let's start getting ready to replace the table saw and the band saw with the jigsaw. And the first thing I have to do is the tax cut. So for the tax cut, what I'm doing is I'm cutting a quarter inch strip from the edges to save this rounded edge. And I do that to make the skate shop owner happy because he really likes it because this is the history of the skateboards and he likes to make things out of them. So let's start marking it since we don't have the table saw fence. So what I'm going to do is mark a quarter inch away from the edge. And then just trace a little nice little line by referencing the edges. Now that I have it marked, let's see if I could cut this like this. Okay, so I just finished cutting off all the tax cuts and uh, it's fairly straight, not too bad. Now we can move on to the next step, which is cutting these into fours, four different strips. Now, according to my calculation, I think I could do one and three quarter inch strips and I should get four strips out of them. So let's go ahead and start cutting that out. So I have these boards cut into four different strips per board. And honestly, it's fairly straight, but it's not that consistent. So this is when you start appreciating the fence on these table saws and the band saw, and you don't have to measure it each time. So yeah. Now, what we're going to do, since this is kind of wavy a little bit and it's not perfectly straight, I'm going to do a little trick which makes it seem like it's very straight and um, pretty much what I'm doing is rounding it over so it makes it kind of consistent. And I can get fancy and start using my vise and a planer to make it nice and straight, but I'm gonna keep this very low budget. So one of my favorite tools in the shop is this rasp. And one side is coarse, the other side is a little more fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two clamps and I'm going to 
clamp it down on the edge of my table and use a rasp to round it over. It's a nice way to get things flat if you don't have a planer or hand plane or table saw or band saw or anything with the fence and you're just kind of freehanding it. So let's do that. Okay, so I have these strips nicely rounded and um, that actually took a long time and I'm so tired right now. And one more thing, I used the grip tape as a sandpaper and I got it nice and smooth, pretty much ready for finish. Now we have one more cut left to do, which is cross cutting to get its final dimensions. And I'm going to use a square right here and then um, Try to cut right on the line. I'm not gonna use a square and reference it using the jigsaw because sometimes there's a little bit of blade drift. So I'll just get it as close to the line as possible and then later on I can sand it. Okay, so when it comes to the skateboards, they're all prepped and ready to go and ready for assembly. Now, I need four strips of plywood on each corners to connect all these skateboards together and then a half inch plywood for the base or the bottom. And I found this three quarter inch by probably one inch strip cut off that I'm probably never going to use. So this is actually perfect. So I'm going to use this as the four corners. Got it? Okay, so I have the plywood strips ready for assembly. And these are the strips and the pattern that I'm going to go with. Now, I need to space it in between the strips and I'm going to be using the square, the base of the square. And I think this is about three quarter inch. Yeah, this is about three quarter inch and it should be more than enough. Yeah, it's gonna be more than enough. So let's go ahead and assemble that now. Since I can't use any other power tools, I would have used pin nails. And since I can't do that, I'm going to use small little nails and a hammer. So let's add that to the little inventory here. I mean, technically I could use a dowels instead of this hammer, but let's just add it in there, huh?
Okay, so I have it nicely assembled, and all we have to do now is put this over here. Okay, so the bottom is on now. I'm just going to nail them directly from the sides. And I don't need too much, maybe like four per sides. Now, I could put grip tape on the bottom just like I did before but I'm just gonna leave it as is honestly I'm just gonna add some feet let's go add some feet done okay so here it is a record holder made out of five different recycled skateboards, but made only using one hand power tool, which was the jigsaw. Now, I did use other hand tools, and most of these tools, you'll probably have them in your shop, maybe even most households. I mean, you have the utility knife, I'm sure a lot of you have hammers and screwdrivers, and the only thing you probably don't have is this rasp, which I really like. So I'll have the link down in the description below, but this thing eats up wood and pretty much grades it like cheese. So check it out. Now, as for the record holder, came out pretty decent. And if you just look at it, it's okay. But as soon as you know that it's made only using one hand power tools and pretty much shaped by hand, you might be impressed. And honestly, I didn't want to put on any kind of finish. I'm just going to use it as a little bit of storage for stuff in the shop anyway. So I'm just going to leave it as is. But I honestly think it came out pretty decent for something that I just made using one power tool. Now, the point of this video is to show you that you could make things with limited tools and you don't need a fancy table saw or expensive band saw or anything else. However, this project really, really made me appreciate all the tools that I have in the shop and that makes this process so much easier. I know a lot of you out there who like using hand tools only, but I'm not that kind of guy. So after this project, I really appreciate the table saw fence, uh, a router with the round over bit. That would have been really nice. It took me like two hours to round these over by hand, but it would have been like, I don't know, nice little 10 minutes with the router bit. There's so many little things that I took it kind of for granted because I have it, but if I didn't have these, something as simple as this could take me what? I think it took me solid five hours today. So yeah. So if you feel a little ungrateful about the shop that you have right now, challenge yourself and make something using one power tool and see where that goes because you'll definitely start appreciating it. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel and comment down below which tools you just can't live without in your shop. Thanks again and until next time. Woo!